Hello everyone, welcome back to another very special video. I'm at my favorite coffee shop in La Jolla. It's called Il Giardiano di Lely. For those of you who know, you know the place. Beautiful sunny day in San Diego. Usually in La Jolla it's never sunny, but today it's incredibly sunny. No clouds in the sky. Lovely, lovely. It's so, so strange because it's always gloomy here because of the ocean. Happy to be back and I want to talk about Airbnb today. Very, very special topic. For those of you who know me, uh, you guys know that I've been doing Airbnb rentals since 2017. So what I do is called Airbnb arbitrage. I rent properties, I lease them, and then I sublease them with the owner's consent. And I've been doing that, like I said, since 2017. So it's been like seven years of my journey. I'm such an OG. I know everything there is to know about Airbnb, all the ins and outs. And I've been through this whole journey with them, pre-pandemic, during pandemic, post-pandemic, and now this whole new era of Airbnb. Question we hear nowadays is, how is the Airbnb market doing? Is Airbnb dead? A lot of people say, are these rentals in such a high demand? Are we over the Airbnb era? Those are the big questions circulating around. So, got my cinnamon matcha latte, and I can't spill all the tea, all the matcha tea, when it comes to Airbnb. Sounds so poetic. Nothing poetic about it though. I had my ups and downs with Airbnb. Maybe you guys have seen my famous TikTok when I have this therapy session with Airbnb. That's how I feel about our relationship. We had our, a lot of ups and downs, but we're still going strong. You know, there's love and there's hate, but love prevails as usual. Mostly love for profits from my end <laughs> and consistent cash flow. But anyways, regardless, if I was to start Airbnb today, how, what would I do different? And what would be the steps I would take compared to 2017? Well, difficult, super, super difficult to compare because two different eras, it's seven, seven years in between. Back then, there were not a lot of regulations. The whole concept was pretty new. The company was started, I think it was 2010, 2011. So it was a, it was pretty new platform. People were still starting to use it, getting familiar with it. The support system was different. Everything was so, so different. It was, I have to say, it was way easier to get started back then than it is nowadays. Nowadays, they're way more strict when it comes to regulations, uh, verifications, accounts, profiles, addresses, everything. Everything is verified. Everything has to go through some kind of vetting process even like if you put in uh, nowadays if you put in an address if you want to list a property and you put in an address uh, most of the time they do need first of all they need first you to verify the address so they will send you a code to your address you'll receive the code in the mail and then you will have to input that code before you publish the listing they really want to make sure that you're publishing the property with the correct address because what would happen is people would use random addresses to hide their listings and use different locations to maybe showcase better locations. Like let's say they're in a bad area of downtown, but they do want to showcase their listing as part of the downtown. So they would use a different address to promote it. And then people would get confused and they would complain. So maybe you listen to all those complaints and they, you know, they implemented this whole new address verification process which also makes it a lot more difficult to publish new listings. What happened with me is a couple of my properties is I want to make new listings, but then I have to wait a couple of weeks to receive this code. And FYI, a couple of times I've never received the code. It never gets in the mail. Don't know what happens to it. Does it get lost or they never mail it? I don't know. It just never arrives. So anyways, it's not as easy to get started as it was 2017. You would just publish a listing on the map. You could point your location anywhere. So if you were, if my listing was in Seaport, I could just move my location to be like somewhere else in downtown. You know, you could just do it. Yeah. No questions asked. Nowadays, you can't do it. Like the, the system won't allow it. To 2017. Yeah. Back then in San Diego, we didn't need permits. Nowadays, you do need permit. One person can only have one permit. So I cannot hold more than one permit under my own name. I can, however, assign my lease to someone else and then apply for a permit under someone else's name. So there are loopholes, like always, of course, but it's just way more difficult than before because not only you need to get permit, you need to get TOT number and business license. 
and of course consent from the owner that you're allowed to publish your property on Airbnb. You are putting yourself at risk of if anything goes wrong, your guests can complain to STRO compliance and they can fine you if there's something wrong, if you're not providing listings like you promised to, if there's something unsanitary in your listing, if something wrong with your listing, if it's not safe, if you don't have all like the safety equipment, if you're advertising it as three bedrooms and it's two bedrooms and stuff like that. So you're opening yourself to a lot of other risks with the permits and permits of course are not cheap. Each one costs about thousand dollars and it's only I believe two years. Also, also need to do regular quarterly reporting for the TOT taxes to make sure that all the transit occupancy taxes have been paid. So yeah, a lot of fun times, a lot of new challenges with Airbnbs, a lot of new regulations, a lot of new demands from the city regulators, from the STRO ordinance, other organizations that I don't remember names of. So yeah, besides it being more challenging than ever, if I have to say, and guests being more demanding than ever. I am still going strong with Airbnb seven years now. Our journey still continues. What I like about it is there's a consistent cash flow. Thank God San Diego is such a high demand market. The weather, beautiful beaches, lots of things to do, a lot of family activities, a lot of conventions, close to Mexico, shopping, hiking, sport activities, always some events. It's in super high demand. So there are always, always people coming in. I keep my occupancy pretty high above 90 percent most of the time i do have to lower my rates on lower the mandates to keep my occupancy high which is fine you know it kind of balances out at the end of the year i don't usually lose money the worst months i break even and that's pretty much it of course summer and summer months are doing much better than other months i don't ever really know like this year september october have been doing really well last year not so well so it's kind of like weird you can't really predict it i'd say the worst months are usually november and december when people are mostly home they're not traveling as much we have christmas thanksgiving holidays they prefer to stay home close to their loved ones rather than travel but it's also like really depends so you can't generalize it so we'll see how this year goes so far it's been going really well even with inflation and markets overall not doing well years i have to say started really bad but kind of like towards the middle started picking up so i think we're in a pretty good place right now with the rentals if you ask me is airbnb dead i would say no it's more alive than ever they are making a lot of changes the platform has been growing so much i have a lot of new categories they're launching experiences cool and unique places to stay a lot a lot of fun things to do with your stays better support i want to say better I wouldn't say in quality wise better like i think their support has been outsourced from india or i don't know philippines so they're not the support we had pre-pandemic remember when we had all the u.s personnel working as the supports so you would call them they'll be like super knowledgeable about everything about the platform these guys don't know much they're, they're kind of like trying to but not so really but they are really on top of their game like they're they're reaching out they're calling they're emailing chatting they you know, they make sure to respond within a couple of minutes. In terms of that, they're really on top of it. In terms of like the knowledge and the foundation for the Airbnb, it's like, I would say mm, we're not on that level yet, but I think we're getting there. Some of the fees have also increased. Book a place, the fees are higher than before. And the occupancy days, the taxes are getting higher, but I guess that's fine, that's normal. Like for the markets and the situation in the world, the economy situation, I guess we could all expect that. And what would I do now when it comes to my Airbnb journey? Well, at this moment, I have quite a few properties. Most of them are rental arbitrage, like I said. I don't usually work as a manager for other hosts or as a co-host. I might consider it in the future, you never know, because I'm quite good at what I do and I have a pretty good crew. But for now, I just have my own properties that I do arbitrage with. I will probably be adding a couple more properties to my portfolio. I'm also thinking of adding some ADUs to my properties just to maximize the space. Maybe an RV to one of the properties, maybe a container, a, a container stay. Maybe also leveraging my properties for to rent it as a corporate space or as an event space on the days when we have those places open. But I don't know, I still think about it. I haven't decided quite yet what to do, but if you ask me, is Airbnb dead? Definitely not dead. I'm definitely not giving up on it and we're going strong. And 
like any other relationship it is complicated but there's still lots of love and respect one day i do want to film a very detailed video about my airbnb journey the fun stories i've had throughout the years how i've got robbed and violated i mean my property not me how i had fun and challenging guests and how i manage reviews and demands and complaints and omgs <laughs> and refunds and requests and stuff like that this is a really big chapter i can open up on one day but we're gonna get there slowly it's complicated but we're still going strong for sure i do also want to maybe focus more on education i want to probably come up with a few different courses on how to start airbnbs how to manage your properties how to start your first airbnb business should you buy properties for airbnb or do arbitrage and things like that because i feel like i have a lot of background here and knowledge that i can share with the rest of the world and anyone who wants to learn and of course as well if you guys have any feedback or you want to share something with me i am so much open to learning because i do want to expand my knowledge database and i want to you know maximize my profits with my units of course that is the essential goal but it just requires work and dedication and of course you gotta have certain passion for it with people around you that will help you because it's not easy to do it alone so you have to have your crew of course if you do have one property or two yeah definitely you can do everything by yourself you can even do cleaning by yourself like uh, clean my properties who knows how many times but when the numbers and volume is high you just cannot do things on your own so you need your partners you need your maintenance people your cleaning personnel and you need to have really good people around you to succeed and when you think about it it's just not like the units you can rent there's like so much you can leverage out of it you can sell other services you can sell maybe some local activities you can do a tour guides you can you can organize events you can i don't know sell souvenirs to your clients or you can offer airport transfer you can i don't know just you can be so creative you can upsell so much you know like when you go to a bar or a coffee shop you like want to buy pastry but then they're like always trying to upsell you buy a coffee too and buy a soda or buy a sparkling water or just buy this cute little i don't know keychain and stuff like that so you can do the same thing you can put like a atm or you can put like a water machine or you can put i don't know just like it's like a lot of potential i think and then like the consistent cash flow is just like very good incentive yeah and eventually you can also like pull out profits and reinvest in something else like right why not so really hope you enjoyed our little chit chat here about airbnb and i hope i responded to your question is airbnb dead i say it's not dead very much alive and we're very much enjoying this journey together so yeah that's it guys i hope you enjoy the rest of your week and i can't wait to be back on this channel soon bye